Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning. <laughs> good morning, one, good morning, all. Good morning, Facebook. Good morning, YouTube. Good morning, Instagram. <coughs> good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <coughs> good morning. Join as you join, just cheer. My God. Good morning. Wherever you're connecting from, good morning. <laughs> good morning, wherever you're connecting from. Go ahead and begin to share. People of God, wherever you're connecting from, just go ahead and begin to share. Just be obedient. Share the broadcast, people of God. It's cold here. And I know a lot of you are enjoying great weather. But where I am, it's very cold here. It's still cold. <laughs> welcome, 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 welcome. Sister Sharon, are you still in your bed? It's cold. Welcome, good morning, good morning, join and share, join and share, be in prayer mode, be in the mood of worship. Yes, God loves us, he has given us day two, day number two, I did not even know that it was morning time. Is doing a new thing in this season. My God. Somebody worship God with me this hour. Whatever it is. Whatever you're going through. Even if it seems like it's just a small thing. Just worship God. Even if whatever you're going through. Seem like it's a small thing. Worship God people of God. Even if this thing that you're going through and it seemed to be such a small thing, worship God. I remind us that in all things, let us praise God. In all things, let us give thanks to God. In all things, people of God, let us give thanks to Him. I'm, I'm climbing a fence on the other side. Not where I was yesterday, some other place where the water is running. Hallelujah. Yes. Oh my God. Somebody's messing up the view. Somebody go ahead and share the word. Share the word, people of God. Seems like it's been a long time. Ain't nobody come up in here. I'm going where the water is. Somebody worship God with me. Oh, there is the water. I don't know if anybody can see it. I'm zooming it up. That's the water. This is the other side. That's the water, people of God. Look, and it's a stream. It goes all the way. But on the other side, it's a river. And this is where it came from. Whatever we were looking at yesterday, this is the other side of it. Let me see if I can go further. Ah, hey. Hey, here's the water. My God. 
I'm here, people of God, all the way. And it goes all the way up. It's morning meditation. We need a little bit of this. We need a little bit of this in our life. Oh, Jesus. As David said, as the deer panted for the water, so my soul panted after thee. No, I'm fine. I didn't go to the other side. I'm fine. I'm right by my, my car. I didn't go too far. I'm not where I was yesterday. That's why it's a different spot. In, in this wilderness, the streets separate the water. So I'm on the other side. So it goes under that bridge. I don't know if you can see. It goes under that bridge and go to where I was yesterday. My God. I'm thankful. You know, we have to be thankful. This is nature. This is what God gave us. This is nature. This is something that God gave to us. And there's the car out there, so I'm not far from my car. Hey, Jesus, I just, I just want to thank God for somebody here. I just want to thank God for somebody here. God want to bless you. God want to do something in your life. Yes, he wants to do a new thing in your life in this season. Yeah, I'm back out on the street. He wants to do a new thing. People have got to live up on the, in the countryside. In the, <laughs> and it's kind of remind me of some places in Jamaica. Yeah, that's where I just came from. All the way in that ticket to go to the water. All the way up in that ticket. There's no road. It's only a little track. Hallelujah. But it seems as if, and here's another track right there to go up. It seems as if ain't nobody go up here anymore. Yes, my God. I thank God for his goodness. Welcome people of God, wherever you're connecting from. Just go ahead and share the word. Just go ahead and invite somebody and feel good about yourself. I came to encourage some people. I want you to feel good about yourself. This is what the Lord is doing. Because a lot of people, they're not hungry. They're not broke. They are depressed. They are stressed out. And God is saying in the season, be encouraged. God is saying in the season, be encouraged. Today is day two. Day two of the journey. Day two of the fasting. Are you journeying with us? Uh, God bless you. Are you journeying? Are you coming on this journey with us? It's still cold here, so I got to wear a warm jacket out because I didn't know. My God, it's, uh, it's still windy. Look at, look at the trees. It's still windy. If you want to know if it's windy, look at the trees because even the trees glorify God. Let me share something with you. Look at the trees. If you cut down a tree, it will die. But once the tree is still alive, it will glorify God. The Bible said, let everything that I've breath, if you cut the tree down, it will die. And based on where you cut it, because the root will spring forth again. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but they may have cut down your tree. They may have taken some things from you. They may have tried to stop you. They may have tried to destroy you. But the Lord said to tell you, even if they cut you down, you will spring forth. You will rise again. You will bounce back. I came to talk to somebody here today. Even if they cut you down, even if they, they, they try to tear you down, Listen, you see how beautiful it is up there. Hallelujah. Pastor Sandra Rohn, welcome. Good morning. You see how beautiful it, it, it is up there into the, in, deeper into the wilderness where it's beautiful. It is beautiful behind all those tickets, behind all those, you know, there's no wire fence. It, we are on the street, people of God. It's government property. It's obvious because... Oh, Jesus, somebody worship God with me this morning. Whatever you're going through, I just came to tell you, you may be a diamond in the rough waiting for somebody to, to find you. But God is saying, don't rush. The same way we went up there just now, because I didn't go alone, you came with me. Went up there to see up to the top. I'm, another day, 
But I'm not going to do it alone. The next time I'm going to go up there, I'm not going to go alone. Because I want to go all the way to the top where the water is flowing from. Yesterday we were on the other side where it was just gushing out of the rocks. But, oh my God, somebody opened them out and worship God. I don't know who the Lord is using me to talk to. But you might be... You, you might be educated, what I'm trying to say. You might have all the qualifications in the world and you don't have a job. They don't know where to find you. Because some, some, some moss and some ticket are blocking your view. You might be in a spot. You might live in a place and they're looking for you, but they can't find you because of your location. But I want you to know there is power in location. Whatever you're going through, continue to worship your God. You might be... You might not have all the documentation you need to be on the front line, but I came to talk to you. You know what? The same way you can hear the water <laughs> from the street rolling, rushing. It's the same way when you worship your God. He will hear you. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but the same way we can stay on the street and hear the water rolling into the wilderness. And then we find it. It's the same way God will send your destiny helper. I don't know who I'm talking to. Hey, Jesus, somebody. I feel fire. The same way. Hallelujah. The same way. Hallelujah. We heard the water. We didn't see it. We heard it. But today, I came to ask somebody. But today, say today. Today. It was located. Hallelujah. Yesterday, we see the beauty of his holiness. One of the beauty of his holiness. Water gushing out of a rock. That was not man-made. Hallelujah. That was not. No man can make that. They can make a bridge. But they cannot make the rocks. Hallelujah. They can form the rocks into a shape. But let me share this with your people of God. Oh, somebody open your mouth and worship God. The same way we were able to locate that water. And the body where it's, go where it's coming from. It's clean. Hallelujah. My God. It is clean. But I came to let you know it's the same way you are clean. You are living your life to please God. And you are wondering, Lord, when am I going to meet my husband? When is the wife coming? Lord, you told me that I'm going to get married since 2014 and I'm still single. What am I doing wrong? And God is saying, just continue to pray. The right person is coming. Continue to pray. I'm sending your destiny helper. Continue to pray because you are behind those bushes. But I can still hear you worshiping God. You are behind those bushes. But I'm here to let you know they will find you. The right person will see you in my time I will make all things beautiful in my time I will make all things beautiful people of God the same way I know many of you heard me saying oh there is water back there can anybody hear it and everybody heard it hallelujah and now guess what now guess what people of God Jesus oh my God I went in the same way God is about to enter in. Let him in. Let him in. Listen to me. There is no, there is no road. There is no wire fence. There is no bomb, nothing that, no barricade. I came to talk to somebody here today. There is no barricade to block you anymore, to stop you anymore. You don't have to pay to go over there. It is free. All you need is your faith. All it takes is your faith. I don't know who the Lord is using me to talk to this morning. But I came to encourage you. Something might be in front of you. And you cannot see it. Because you're too lazy. You're too scared. My God. You are fearful of everything. To just walk over there. And to look what God has for you. To get an experience. My God. To release your stress. I don't know who the Lord is using me to talk to. But I came today to encourage you. Keep on praying. Keep on praying. Keep on praying. Keep on pushing. It's not late. You're not getting old. God is saying, I'm saving the best for last. Hallelujah. He said, I'm saving the best for last. Because in my time, my God, I will make all things beautiful. In my time. In my time. In moments like this. 
He will send somebody to bring the word to you. It doesn't matter if you are at work. It doesn't matter if you are home in your bed. But he will send somebody to bring a refreshing to your spirit. To revive you. To restore you. To renew you. To bless your spirit. To give you testimony. To say, my God, anytime I listen to that woman of God, I'm inspired. I don't know how she do it. But I thank God for her life. Yes. It's not about man. It's all about Jesus. It's not about man, people of God. It's all about Jesus. Fear not. He is with you. Hallelujah. The Lord was ministering to me and he said to me, watch what's going to happen. A lot of people are going to receive so much during this journey. People have got all you got to do is be obedient. So go ahead and begin to share the broadcast. We need the word in our spirit. We cannot do it without the word of God. Hallelujah. We cannot do it without the word of God. We cannot move forward without the word. We have to stand on the word. Mighty God. Yes, we have to stand upon the word. We need the word in this time. To, to listen to me. To strengthen us. In the morning when you rise. Jesus said. He prayed early morning. He prayed late at night. Rise early and, bring, and, and study the word. Feed your spirit. Feed your spirit, people of God. Mr. Ofeli, welcome. Sister Kayan, welcome. Sister Fiona Brown, welcome. My God, Sister Dana Black, welcome. Sister Janera. Sister Petronia, mighty God. Sister Samantha Mackenzie White. Sister Olive, Sister Mercy, Sister Denise Gray. My God, Sister Michelle. Sister Diane Peard, Sister Sharon. Sister Cherise Brown. Sister Terry, Tessa Palmer over there in London. Elizabeth Palmer down there in Kingston, Jamaica. My God. Sister Lillian. Welcome. My brother Wilfred over there in, in Grenada. Hallelujah. Welcome. Lisa Everbless. Althea Stewart. My sister, welcome. Sister Kayan in Kingston. My God. Sister Rose Miller. Sister Janisa, mighty God. Somebody open him out and welcome, welcome, welcome each and every one that's here. My brother Joseph Grant, welcome. God bless you. May the Lord strengthen you as you are out there on the front line. My God, my God. Somebody worship God with me this morning. Sister Christine, welcome. God bless you. Sister Carolyn, Sister Shade, mighty God. Sister Denise, mm. welcome, welcome people of God, welcome, God bless you everyone, welcome, as you join, welcome, mm. welcome people of God, welcome, hallelujah. Jesus. My God. <sighs> Sister Yolanda, welcome. Norman Jones, my brother, welcome. Doreen Henry, welcome. Lorna McDonald, Sister Marsha, welcome. Sister Sophia, <sighs> welcome. If you are here, and you didn't say hello, I cannot see you. It doesn't matter even if we're friends. If you did not say hello, Sister Janetta, welcome. I cannot see you, people of God. So don't be sitting there in your feelings and saying that the woman of God didn't say hello. Sister Helen, welcome. <sniffs> Camila, welcome. God bless you. I love to see you worshiping God. Hallelujah. I love to see young people worshiping God. I love when young people believe that there is indeed a God. <sniffs> Hallelujah. Yes. I, 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 it makes me feel good. Hallelujah. To see people of God. Let me share something with you. When you see young people worshiping God, pray with them. <sniffs> when you see young people worshiping God, pray with them. It's not easy for young people to come to Christ. No, it's not. 
It's not easy. <coughs> it's not easy for a young woman, especially single parent, worshiping God. It's hard because there are some older people that don't even know that if they're not baptized, they're not saved. Jesus said, no man cometh to the Father, but by me, Jesus Christ was baptized. So this morning, the Lord, something happened yesterday when we, when we got off the live. A young man, he called me mistakenly thinking that I was somebody else. And we had a conversation. Yes, he's married. He was not trying to, to be, be, be rude. He, he was trying to talk to me because I look like somebody he knew from back home. So somehow the Holy Spirit allowed me to take the call and continue the conversation. And then I asked him, I said, are you saved? You know. And he said, um, no. He said, I go to church. I said, you have to get baptized. You have to turn your life over to Jesus. He said, I love God. I do everything right. But I, 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 I am not baptized. I said, my brother, you have to baptize. You must be born again. I said, Nicodemus came to Jesus Christ by, my, by night. And he asked him a question. And Jesus ignored him totally. Hallelujah. Good morning, Sister Campbell. Jesus ignored Nicodemus totally because he wanted to know how Jesus did this and did that. Jesus said, listen to me. You must be born again. So sometimes, some people will call with some questions. God is only saying that. Hear what they have to say. Don't answer that question. Redirect them. Hallelujah. So I was able to have a conversation. I said, is your wife saved? He said, we go to church. But they told us that we have to go to class in order to get baptized. I said, let me share something with you. You need training. He knows everything about the world. But when it comes to the things of God. And I, I, I begin to question myself when I hung up the phone. I said, Lord... I really don't want to remember what I was like before I gave my life to you. Because I said, how old are you? He said, I'm 45. I said, my God, you're 45? You're 45 and you're not saved? And you're asking me these questions. I felt bad in my spirit. You know, I had convictions. I, I spoke to him. I, I was very polite. You know, I talked to him. I encouraged him. He needs to give his life to the Lord. I said, you and your wife need to get baptized, my brother. He said, we're on our way. I said, yes, do it. And don't wait too long. The devil don't want no men to serve God. Let me share this with you. The man was called to ministry. And he said, he look, I look familiar like one of the persons that used to follow him when he was doing dance hall. I said, I used to go to dance hall, but I don't know you. And I've never been to your side of town. You know, so people of God, let me share this with you. God will allow you to talk to some people in order to get a word that is going to be a seed that will be planted in your spirit. So right then and there, the Lord began to talk to me. He said, don't be convicted. Don't feel bad. You told him the right thing. I said to him before he hung up, I said, you know what? You call me looking for your friend. But guess what? The Lord said, you called me because he wanted you to hear what I have to say to you. Life is going great with the guy. He's married. He's happy. And him and his wife is going to church. But they are not saved. People have got, if you're following me and you're not saved, it's time to give your life to the Lord. This is only showing you how there are some people out there. Because he had some tough questions. He said, what about those people that are not baptized and they're going to church? I said, they're going to hell. Hell is going to be full with churchgoers because some people think that going to church alone is it. You have to immerse under the water. You have to surrender to God. You have to open your mouth and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and you will be saved. 
It's not just about going to church. Look, the churches are closed. The churches are closed. God allowed the church to be closed because some people are filled up in the church and they are not saved. So now the churches are closed. It's time to turn our life over to Jesus. It doesn't matter how much money we have. It doesn't matter how nice we look. It doesn't matter what kind of clothes we wear. It doesn't matter how we dress. It doesn't matter how much money you put in that offering bowl. It doesn't matter how much money you're so in ministry. If you're not saved, you're not saved. You can't just go to church. You can't just find the church and sit in there. You have to do something else. You must be born again. You must be cleansed. You must be washed. Yes, my sister, it's true. I, I, I felt joy in my heart after, you know, the Lord spoke to me. He, the guy hung up the phone. I said, thank you, Jesus. You know, I said, even when I'm home, even when I'm doing my own business because I, I, I was trying to fix something to eat, you know, and he called me. You don't know me. He called me a messenger to talk to me. Because I look like one of his followers in the dance hall. I said, what do you mean? He said, I'm just calling you to say that you step up in life. I said, step up how? He said, because you're a Christian. Let me tell you something, people of God. You don't know how powerful it is to serve God. You don't know how powerful. And this is why in the book of Galatians chapter 5, it tells you that people will even be with you. People will even be with you because you are living your life to please God. People will try to be with you. You sh Listen to me. Today we're going to stay in Galatians. Today we're going to stay in Galatians. Somebody look at the book of Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3 verse 1. It says, Oh foolish Galatian, who have cast evil spell on you? It means that people can cast an evil spell on you based on your spiritual life. You could be living your life to please God. And somebody are envious and jealous of the, the zeal that you have. And it will happen because this is what Paul was saying. He was asking, who cast an evil spell on you? In, in, the, in the King James Version, it said, who bewitch you? It means that people will be jealous of your spiritual life because they can't see and they can't understand how come you love God so much? How come you just start walk right? How come you just start talk right? How come you just start to speak right? How come you just start to dress different? How come you begin to look different? These are things that will attract jealousy and envy. But that don't mean that you should not it's Galatians chapter 3, my sister. That don't mean that you should not serve God. Live your life for others to be jealous. In Christ, Paul said, if you want to boast, boast in Jesus Christ. Don't boast in your house. Don't boast in your clothes. Don't boast in your family. Boast in the Lord. People will be jealous of your Christian life. If you are correct, walking right I want to share this word here today if you are living the right life listen to me blessing will chase you down goodness and mercy is your portion goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life because of the life that you live people of God we are here to live a life to we are representing God so when man see us they want to follow you they want to know what are you doing for you to look so good anybody remember those old pictures the way we used to be ugly when we were living in sin how we used to ugly we thought we were looking good we thought we were the best we and then you look back on those pictures 10 years ago. All you see that you were loaded with demons. Yes. I'm saying it because it's true. I'm saying it because it's true. 
I look back on some pictures that I took years ago and I said, Father God, this was really me. You pick, you, you pick me up. You clean me off. You scrub off all those things that was on me. Lord, look at me now. I am living my life to please you. I look good in the face of man. Why? Not only in the face of God, but now in the face of man. Because the demons that I used to carry, they're no longer with me because they're gone. I resist them. The Bible says resist the devil and he will flee from you. People of God, you have to live your life to serve God. Live your life to please God. Live a holy and a righteous life. My God, I look at some pitch. I'm talking about me. I'm not throwing any shades at anybody here. Because if you only look back and check your pictures. Look back on those old pictures. Hallelujah. When those pictures on Facebook pop up and it said eight years ago. And you look at those pictures, all you see is demons. All you see is the demon that you were walking around with. So I'm not showing any shades at anybody. No condemnation going on right here. I'm just talking about me. Yes. I'd rather to talk about my ugliness than to talk about your ugliness. The Bible said I should take out the big old log out of my eye. Than to focus on that little piece of stick in your eye. Hallelujah. Yes. Look, if you really want to know how far you came, look at those pictures that you took years ago. Hallelujah. Yes, people of God, the life that you are living now, because you are coming closer to God. So the more, the more you, you have a plant in your God, you plant in your backyard, or you have a plant in a pot, and you begin to mold the plant, and you begin to water the plant, and, and you begin to take care of it, you trim off the dead leaves. It's a beautiful plant. That's how we were. Dead in sin. Dry up. Ugly. Messy. Jesus Christ. When I look at the picture. I said Lord I thank you. How far you brought me. People of God. If you want to know if what I'm saying is true. Go dig up some old pictures. And look at them at yourself. To see how far God bring you. How much God clean you up. How much God scrub you down. How much work Daddy Jesus had to go through. Just for you to look like this today. That's why we shouldn't be jealous of anything we see anybody with. Because listen to me. I, I, I'm looking at this particular scripture here. In Galatians chapter 3. It's talking about the law and faith in Christ. Paul said, oh foolish Galatian. Who... Who have cast a spell on you. For the meaning of Jesus Christ's death was made as clear to you as it has seen a picture of his death on the cross. Let me ask you this one question. Did you receive the Holy Spirit by obeying the law of Moses? Of course not. We didn't receive the Holy Spirit when we obeyed the law of Moses. We received the Holy Spirit when we obeyed the law. Because Jesus Christ came and his blood was shed. Let, let me see what Paul had to say. He said, of course not. You received the spirit because you believed the message you heard about Christ. How foolish can you be? After starting your new life in the spirit. Why are you now become perfect in your own human effort? The other King James Version said, you started off good in this spirit, but now you become perfect in your flesh. We're not going to allow the devil to rob us. We're not going to in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We will not allow the devil to rob us from where God is taking us. Why? Because now we understand when it said, Oh foolish Galatians who cast evil spell. It means that yes indeed. Somebody can see you living your life to please God. And they try to bewitch you. They can cast a spell on you. It's possible. It's time for us to get our zeal. The way we used to, the, we used to love to do the things of the enemy. The things of this world. Before we gave our life to the Lord. Now that we are in Christ. We need to have that zeal. That passion. Hallelujah. Yes for Christ. We need that passion people of God. We need to get back that passion. We need to get back to that place. We don't need to lose it. Listen, this is what it said. You started out good. You were perfect in the spirit. 
When you gave your life to the Lord, when you first found Jesus Christ, you were so passionate. Every day you worship God. Every time they see you, you worship in God. You have that love for the Lord. You have that zeal. You were strong in the Lord. But you met this person and they contaminate you. And now you're sitting down looking at them worshiping God. And you, you're sitting down. Don't let nobody put no spell on you. Don't let nobody speak no negative in your life. You will always be strong in the word of God. Once you study it. Study the word of God. Study. People of God, study the word of God. Be passionate about the word of God. Be passionate about it. Don't lose your zeal. Don't lose your zeal. My God. I came to talk to somebody here today. Don't lose your zeal. Don't lose your zeal. This is what the Bible is saying here. He said, all right, after starting your new life in the spirit, you are now trying to become perfect. We don't want to be perfect in the flesh. Tell somebody, I don't want to be perfect in the flesh. I don't want to be perfect in the flesh. I want to live my life to please God. I don't want to go back to my past. I don't want to do the things that I used to do anymore. I will not let the devil lead me anymore. I'm not going to take advice from people that don't know anything about God's business. The Bible said, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Don't take, un don't take advice from ungodly people, even if they're related to you. Don't go to them for advice. It's a shame. You block your blessing. When you go to people that are not saved, when you go to people that are not saved for advice, you call them on the phone. You know what, sister, sister so-and-so, could you tell me what to do? Come to find out this person is not saved. You're robbing your own blessing. The Bible said, blessed is the man that don't do that. So if you do that, stop doing that. Stop going to ungodly people. Not everybody in church is saved. I just talk about the man. And when you look at his picture, when he called me, he looked like a... Apostle. I said to him, man, do you know God is calling you to ministry? Why are you running? He said, me nah, I run. I said, but the Lord is calling you to ministry. People of God, don't try to be perfect in your flesh. Being perfect in the flesh is trying to do everything that the world is doing. Being perfect in the flesh is trying to go to every place that everybody is going. My God, some of us, you are tearing down some office door to do a certain job. And you don't know that these people are cult. When you get in there and you start working among them, you have to take your time and fire yourself. Because when you go there, you find out that these people are serving other gods. We cannot be perfect in the flesh this, in this time. Sister Audrey, Sister Ethel, we cannot be perfect. Sister Cheryl, we don't want to be perfect in flesh. We want God to say, well done, good and faithful servant, Sister Ivette. We're not perfect. In, in We don't want to be perfect to please man. Because perfect in the flesh, meaning that we are doing it to please man. We are doing it into the eyes of man. We want to live our life to please God. We want to be perfect in the eyes of God, not in the eyes of man. Man cannot save us. Man cannot take us to heaven. Friends cannot listen to me when we follow some friends and when we find out this person is not really saved. But listen to me, people of God. We are still in the book of Galatians. We're not condemning anybody here. Sister Janissa, in the book of Galatians chapter 6 and verse 1, it said, Dear brothers and sisters, if any believer is overcome by some sin, you are you who are godly should gently and humbly help this person and take them back into the right path and be careful not to fall into the same temptation because sometimes you know God will send you to talk to some people and we end up sleep with them. This is how a lot of people get married. God sent you to minister to this man and you start to sleep with him. God sent the man to minister to the woman and him start to sleep with the woman. And then she backslide and they get married and stop going to church. Because now you want to be like the person that God sent her to minister to. 
So you become perfect in your flesh. So this is when the Bible said, don't fall into temptation. Many times people come to you and God send them to you for you to minister to them. But the demon that they are walking around with cause you to backslide. It's possible. It said it right here in the Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6, Sister Dana. It said, be careful. I'm reading the, um, a different version. I'm not reading King James Version. Hallelujah. He said, be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. Share each other's burden. And in this way, obey the law of Christ, not the law of man. A lot of people come to you. But they didn't know that the demon that you were fighting was so strong. And they came to you, but they like you. They came to you to minister to you because God sent them. But because of the food that you cook, the sweet food, and you offer them a plate, and all of a sudden they backslide. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but I'm coming to you with the raw and diluted word of God. Sister Michelle, I cover you right now in the blood. I cover this broadcast right now in the blood. I cover each and every soul that I've gathered here this hour. I bless you today. Hallelujah. I bless you today. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I cover you and your family in the blood. In Jesus mighty name I pray. Amen. He said, if you think you are too important to help someone, you are only fooling yourself. You are not that important. I'm reading the Bible right here. Galatians chapter 6. It said, if you think you are too important to help someone, don't think that. You are not. This is why I'm always saying, I am not better than anybody. Uh, you are not better than anybody. It doesn't matter how much degree you have. It doesn't matter how much money you have. You're not better than anybody. And this is why the Bible reminds you, whatever you have, share it with the ministry that is feeding you. Share it with the ministry that's blessing you. Jesus Christ. Share whatever you have with the people that God sent to bless your spirit, to strengthen you spiritually, because you're not better than anybody else. This is the word of God. Yes, Sister Maria, right here. He said, pay careful attention to your own work. For then you will get the satisfaction of a job well done. That you need not, you won't need to compare yourself to anyone. I'm talking to you people of God from the book of Galatians chapter 5. As anointed as Paul was, he was saying, I'm not better than anybody. None of us are better than anybody. I'm not too important to help you in your problem if I can. You are not too important to help me in my problem if you can. But don't sit over there and criticize me. Because I'm not supposed to criticize you. This is what the Bible is making clear to us. Hallelujah. Jesus. My God. It says, For we are each responsible for our own conduct those who are taught the word of god should provide for their teacher sharing all good things with their mighty god i'm gonna read that one again because some people they think that they're not supposed to support ministry some people don't think that god intend for them to bless the ministry some people think that the moment they came to the to the broadcast and 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 it was a blessing to them some people are being lifted some people receive deliverance but they don't think that it's okay to bless the ministry paul is saying right here those who are taught the word of god should provide for their teacher sharing all good things with them anything you need for yourself Bless a ministry with it as well. Because whatever you do for others, God will give it back to you. It said, don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. I'm reading the Bible, people of God. You will always harvest what you plant. So when you bless a ministry, whatever you give to the ministry, it will come back to you in, in folds. It will be increased. God will find another way to give it back to you. 
There are some people that are saying that you should bless ministry. The devil is a liar. Don't let Satan rob you. The reason why some people cannot grow. It doesn't matter how much money they have. They are still not delivered. They are still not set free. Some people cannot even study the word of God. Because they are closing their hands tight. Do you know that the very fact that you are going to open the Bible and retain it. It has to be the Holy Spirit. If the presence of God is not with you. You cannot retain anything when you read. The Spirit of God has to be with you. God bless your sister Annette. Love our money. God bless you. People of God, I'm here to let you know. We, you cannot hold your hand tight against the word of God. If you don't bless those who bless you, who you think is going to bless them? If God is using someone to bless you, and you don't bless that person, who do you think is going to bless that person? God is using you. God is saying you need to bless the person. Because if you don't bless the person, you're blocking your own blessings. This is the word of God right here. Some people, they go to every ministry and they said, locate me, locate me, pray for me, pray for me, pray for my family. And they will never stretch their hand to the ministry to bless it. And God is laughing at you. God is laughing at people like that. I'm saying it flat out. God is laughing. God is saying, look at you. I'm blessing you financially. And you refuse to bless the ministry. What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm using these people to bless you. And you're refusing to be a blessing. What are you doing? You're speaking against the ministry that I'm using to bless you. Oh God, you cannot kick against rocks. You cannot speak against the ministry that God is using to bless you. Don't do it. I don't know why God is using me here in Galatians chapter 6. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to go back to verse 1. He said, Brothers and sisters, if another believer is overcome by sin, you who are living a righteous life should gently and humbly take this person by the hand and bring them back to the fold. But be careful, because if you're not careful, you will fall worse than that person. You will fall in deeper pit than that person. Yes. Why? Based on the demon that this person is fighting. Not anybody. It is the truth. Not anybody can minister to certain people. Because there are some people that have some serious demons that they are fighting. And these people will destroy you. Remember there was a family. There was a family that wanted to, 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 de to cast out demons. A few brothers. And the man that was filled with the demon. Possessed. He said. Paul I know. Jesus I know. But who are you? And they tore them up. The demon tear up the man. Tear their clothes off. Strip them naked and disgrace them. So there are some people that you can't go, you can't face them. Those people, you have to leave them for the church, for the pastor. Hallelujah. I'm saying it today in a nice tone of voice. Because there are some people who don't get it. There are some people out there who don't get it. Back up. The pollen is out so bad today. I'm not going back out outside. I'm still here. I'm still here, people of God. There it is. I'm still here, but the pollen, the pollen is so bad. It's beautiful out. It's beautiful. See, it's beautiful out, but the pollen is so bad. The pollen is so bad. I can't, I can't take no more of it. Hallelujah. When it's time like this, my allergy gives me a hard time. But I promise today, 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 I'm going to take care of it. Hallelujah, yes. People of God, let me share this with you. If you don't know the, this man, Jesus, that I'm talking about, let us confess our sins to him. Let us ask him for forgiveness. We fall short daily. Sometimes, you know, God will send somebody to talk to us. But because we are in our feelings, we take it the wrong way. Everybody have problems. 
everybody's going through something especially during this pandemic everybody is going through a different trials and tribulation and, and the lord is saying it's time for us to be our brother's keeper we are all one nation under god people of god we have to confess our sins we have to confess our sins jesus said no man cometh to the father but by me yes he said he said no man cometh to the father but by me so we need to understand that just getting dressed and go to church that doesn't cut the mustard that alone don't cut the mustard people of god getting dressed and go to church alone don't cut the mustard you have to be saved you have to turn your life over to jesus you must be born again you must be born again you must be born again we have to come to jesus christ in first john chapter 2 it said he is jesus christ the one who is truly righteous he himself is a sacrifice that atoned for our sin and not only our sin but the sins of the world and this is why when he sent me here i can sit here and boldly say if you are following me and you're not saved it's time to give your life to the lord i didn't come to just the righteous no i came to bring sinners to repentance I am the Jonah of the land. I am the Jonah of the land. He gave me a message. He said, go tell my people, repent. Your sins will be forgiven through Jesus Christ. But you have to accept him as your personal savior. There is no way you're going to be saved unless you accept him, unless you surrender to him, unless you confess, you open your mouth and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord because he died for us, people of God. He died for all our sins. He died for our corruptive behavior. He died for you and I to be here. What is taking so long for us to turn our life over to Jesus Christ? Some of us, we baptize and we backslide. What, what are we waiting on to come back to Jesus Christ? What are we waiting on to come back to the fold? Jesus. The Bible said in, 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 in 1 John chapter 3, it said, We, dear friends, we are already God's children, but he has not yet shown us what he, we will be like when Christ appears. But we do know that we will be like him, for we will see him as he really is. Hallelujah. I came to talk to somebody here today. It's time to clean up house. When you love God, when you really love him, you love his family. You love his people. I, I came to talk to some people here today for the simple fact that the man called me. He's grown. He's going to church. And he's asking me if he's going to if I think he's going to heaven if he's not baptized. Oh God. Oh God. I said, remember Jesus Christ was baptized. He said, no man cometh to the Father but by me. Jesus Christ was baptized in River Jordan. In a, it's, a, it's a little dirty place. It's not a big place, River Jordan. But Jesus Christ himself was baptized. I don't know who I'm talking to today. You might be thinking because you're going to church, it's okay. Everything is good. It's not. You have to give your life to the Lord. You have to be baptized. He said you must be born again. You must be born again, people of God. We can't get up every day and jump and send fire, 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 and we're not saved. All that is going to waste. This is why I'm sitting here nicely in the car to share the word of God humbly with you today.
to let you know that it doesn't matter how much prayers you pray. If you don't receive Christ, you're not going to heaven. If you don't have that passport, that is your passport. Receiving Christ, accepting Christ as, say, as your personal Savior and Lord of your life. That is your passport to go to heaven. There are a lot of people who are going to church and they don't baptize. And the pastor is not telling you these things because he himself don't know. It's true. It's time to turn your life over to Jesus Christ. Confess your sins. Every day we sin. Every day we do something wrong. Every day we say something wrong. Some of us, we are watching social media and we have our own opinion of how the people are supposed to speak. That's wrong. Let God work it out for them. Our job is to encourage people to give their life to the Lord. Our job is to tell them, my brother, my sister, I'm saying it nicely with love. It's time to turn our life over to Jesus. It's time to stop sleeping around. It's time to stop, you know, even if you're not physically doing it and you're entertaining people on the phone. All you need is one wife. My sister, all you need is one husband. You don't need to recruit 55 men and then God, you're going to say God will choose one. God is not into that. God wants to do it for you. So when a man is recruiting many, 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 many women, waiting to see which one God is going to pick, you cannot bring God into that. When a woman is recruiting a lot of men and saying that, I don't know which one to marry because they are all generous, they all kind to me. God is, God is saying that none of those men belong to you. None of those men that you are entertaining are not your husband. Wait and I will give you your husband. So it's time for us to stop recruiting people for the position. Because God is watching us. God is waiting. We cannot be recruiting people. You cannot give God the steering and tell him to drive. And then you're trying to drive as well. Once you turn your life over to Jesus, allow him to fix your broken up, your broken vessel. Allow him to clean you up. Hallelujah. This is why I said the other day, go earlier, go back and look at those pictures that you take 10 years ago. What do, what do, what do they look like? Look back on the old pictures. Because Facebook have a way to remind you that you were in some relationship. You know that, right? You used to take pictures and you post it on Facebook. And now those people are not in your life anymore. But five years down the road, one morning you wake up. You see your, 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 your picture pop up. Five years ago. Five years ago. And you see yourself with that person. And you look at that person and you say, you know what? I'm deleting this. I'm not sharing this. The devil, you're a liar. No. That, that is who you were. That is who you were. Compare that picture to the way you look. It's true, Sister Michelle. Some of us, we get into some relationship with some people. We attach ourselves to some people. And God never send them to us. But guess what? Guess what? God never send them to us. But when a year later, two years later, three years later, Facebook bring back this memory to you and this picture show up with this person and you said no I can't share that on Facebook that's how I used to look my god I was a mess this is why I like Facebook Facebook remind you of your past the first picture you put on Facebook 10 15 years ago Facebook will remind you of it reason why because that's a, that's a cycle. Yes. You don't know that this person that look good and qualified and educated and rich. Physically rich. Not spiritually rich. Because the Bible tells us in Revelation that people that we think are rich, they are poor. If you read the book of Revelation chapter 2 and verse chapter and chapter 3, you will know. The people that we think are rich, they are broke, they are hungry, they are naked. Hey, I don't know who I'm talking to right now. Yes, but Re Revelation tells us that. 
There are some people that we look for them. We target certain kind of people to be friends with them. Because they're educated. They know a lot of people. They got money. They live in big house. These people are broke, naked, hungry, poor. Because they worship themselves. They worship material things. They worship other gods. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. You know, in, in Revelation chapter 2 and verse 18, the Bible said, This is the message from the Son of God. Those eyes are like flames, whose eyes are like flames of fire, whose feet are like polished bronze. He said to the church, this was God sending a message to a church that think they were all that. He said, I know all the things that you do. I have seen your love your faith, your service, and your patience, your patient endurance. And I can see your constant improvement in all these things. But listen to what he said. He said, but I have this complaint against you because the church looked good and they have some secret things going on. It said, I have, I have this complaint against you you are permitting that woman, Jezebel, hey, who call herself a prophet, to lead my servant astray. She teach them to commit sexual sin and to eat food offered to idols. I gave her space to repent, but she does not want to turn away from her immorality. Therefore, I will throw Jezebel on the bed of suffering. When somebody is in the bed of suffering, it's called sickness. And those who commit adultery with her will suffer greatly unless they repent. People have got it's time for us to repent. Hallelujah. I will strike her children dead. Then all the churches will know that I am the one who search out all the thoughts and the intention of every person. I will give to each of you whatever you deserve. I'm talking to some people that I'm not on the life. There are some people watching the life. And they don't click on their life because they're afraid of the woman of God might call them out. I'm not calling anybody out. I have time to teach God children who intend to listen. I have the time to 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 to, to yes to in to, to, to I have the time to hey Jesus I can't find the word to invest in those that are able to hear. He said, Who have ears let them hear. So I'm investing time in God's children who are interested. He said I will give to each of you whatever you deserve. But I also have another message. Hey, hear the other message. For the rest of you in Thyatira who have not followed, the, who have not followed false teaching, deeper truth. If you don't follow false teaching, it means that you are seeking after a deeper truth. You are seeking after revelation. Hallelujah. It said, and they call themselves Dep of Satan. Hey, hallelujah. They call themselves Dep of Satan. God said, I will, I will ask nothing more of you except that you hold tight to what you have until I come. So it means that not everybody is bad in the church. There are some good ones in the church. Hallelujah. He said, to all those who are victorious, who obey me to be to the very end, them I will give authority over all nations. They will rule the nation with an iron rod and smash them like clay pot. They will have the same authority I receive from my father. And I will also give them the morning star. Hey. 
Anyone who hear, anyone with ears, let him hear and listen to the Spirit and understand what he is saying to the church. You see, this is the word of God for us, not for you, but also for myself. I take my portion from it because what it said, if I hold fast to what is good, if I hold fast to what I believe, which is the truth, the word of God, if I hold fast to deeper debt, not the death of Satan, to destroy Satan, if I hold fast to what I know that will destroy the devil, people of God, listen to me. Now is the time. This is, yes, it's an anointed word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, my God. God was, God took John. You see, sometimes we think that we are suffering. Because where we live, nobody don't see us. We don't have any friends. Nobody don't like us. But God is saying, I, have, I brought you into that dry season. So you could study the word of God and increase more in your faith. Somebody might be saying, I live at this place and it's dry. There is nothing going on. And I don't have anybody. I don't have anything. And God is saying, look, stop complaining. I brought you there to study the word of God. I brought you there to get an understanding of who you really are. It's time for you to understand yourself and know that I have set you apart. You are different from your family. You see, if the Lord can take me out of my bed and bring me into this wilderness to sit down for two hours to bring the word of God to you, you who are home in your bed, you who are home at your job, you are you who are home in your living room with your feet throw up high on your sofa, looking at me sitting in my car, stuffy, can hardly breathe because of the pollen that's out there. Don't you think that is love? It is love. God loves you so much. He provides all this for you. He provides all this for you. It takes loyalty and dedication to do this. Hallelujah. But there was another church that think they were all that. And Jesus have a word for them. He said, write this letter. I'm into chapter 3 now, verse 14. He says, write this letter to the angel of the church of Laodicea. Hey, this is a message from the one who is Hey, 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 somebody opened him out and said hallelujah. He said, this is a message from the one who is the amen. Hey, hey, hey. From the one who is the amen. The faithful and true witness. The beginning of God's new creation. I'm reading the Bible. I'm in the book of Revelation chapter 3 verse 14. I'm now going to verse 15. It says, I know all the things that you do. That you need a hot, hey, not cold. Talking about some people who are lukewarm. Who want to be Christian Sunday. And Friday night, you're drinking, you're, you're sleeping around, you're getting a little peace because you say, God understand. Some of us, yes, I'm saying it. I'm saying it. You say, God understand your heart. I don't want to cheat on my wife because God understand my heart. I'm just getting a little bit because my wife is sick. I don't want to cheat on my husband. God understand because my husband is sick. God understand. God don't understand. God don't know nothing about that. God don't know nothing about that. God don't have no part with that. You being unfaithful. That don't have nothing to do with God. You living in infidelity. That don't have nothing to do with God. You out there with your promiscuousness. That don't have nothing to do with God. That, has, that is of the devil. You out there recruiting a lot of men thinking that one day God is going to pick one for you. That doesn't have nothing to do with God. 
You out there trying to, 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 to not just sleep, but picking out a lot of women, setting them aside, thinking one day God is going to give you one of these women. That does not glorify God. Be obedient. Be loyal. Be faithful. Be truthful. Be honest. God don't get glory from nothing that has... Listen to me. Anywhere you gather a lot of people and try to pick one of them, God is not going to enter that spot. He's, as long as he is your God, be confident in him. Be confident in your God. People of God, right here in the book of Revelation chapter 3, he says, since you are lukewarm, you are neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. You say, I am rich. I have everything I want. I don't need anything. And you don't realize that you are wretched. You are miserable. You are poor. You are blind. You are naked. I advise you to buy gold from me. Gold that has been purified by fire. Then you will be rich. Hey. Also buy white garment from me. So you will not be ashamed of your nakedness. An ointment for your eyes. So you'll be able to see. <laughs> you see. This is why some people don't want to read. Somebody says speak the truth Rev. Somebody don't want to read Revelation. Because Revelation is powerful. Some people said I read the Bible, but I don't remember anything. Some people can't even read the Bible. The moment they start reading the Bible, they start to get sick. I want you to know this one very thing. If you have a problem reading the Bible, you need to get on your knees and fast and pray and repent. There's something in you that's not right. There's something about you that doesn't glorify God. There's something about your life that needs attention. It, need, it needs God undivided attention. But today I came to tell you. There are some people on this live. I'm going to do this thing that the Lord was giving me when I was leaving the house. I'm here to tell somebody, grab your keys. Grab your keys. Hallelujah. Grab your keys. God wants to bless somebody today. You said I'm tired of paying rent. You said I'm tired of taking the bus. You said I'm tired of riding around in other people's car and they're sneezing on me. You said I'm tired of riding in the back seat and I'm tired of smelling that person's breath. You said I'm tired of staying in family members' house. Lord, when am I going to get my own? Grab your key. Grab your key because today the Lord said I'm giving you key. I'm releasing key on this broadcast today. The Lord revealed to me this morning. He said, write these things down. Number one, tell them, grab their keys. Grab your keys, people of God. Ha, ha, ha. Jesus, grab your keys because the moment you pick up your key, I'm going to say something before I start to pray. I visited a church a couple of years ago. And when I visit the church, the man of God said, drop your key on the altar, on the pulpit. Oh God, everybody put their keys down. But he also had a basket of keys. And he held it like this. And in those, in the basket of keys, there was Mercedes, Mercedes Benz, Maserati, Range Rover, Rolls Royce, Elabaka Chateau. I don't know who I'm talking to. But in that basket that the man of God held up in the air. He said, your key is right there on the, on, on, on the, on the platform. 
Lord of mercy, Jesus. I don't know who the Lord is talking to right now. But the Spirit of the Lord is speaking. Jesus. He said, This basket has keys. Rolls Royce. Porsche. Range Rover. Mercedes Benz. BMW. Hallelujah. And he mentioned names of cars that I can't pronounce. <laughs> I said, Lord, I have never seen nothing like this before. So just give me one of those cars. I said, Lord, give me one of those keys, Lord. I'm taking it in the spirit. I'm taking it in the realms of the spirit. People of God, I claim a key. I didn't, I, at the time, my car, I have an old um, Nissan Altima. But because the moment arise, the moment arise, hallelujah, I was not praying about no car, but the opportunity arise. The man of God said, show your key up here. And I did. He said, in the, in the spirit realm, see yourself with that dream car. See yourself with that dream house. See yourself with your own home. See yourself, hallelujah, with the keys to your new business, your new store, hallelujah, the key to your own church, the key, mighty God. I took it by force. I took a car that I was not able to afford. Hallelujah. I don't know if anybody here. I don't know if anybody here get this revelation. But people of God. This was in summertime. Hallelujah. This was in summertime. But I want you to know, it was in summer. But by October, my birthday, my birthday, hey, my birthday came. This was during summer. But my, when my birthday came, people of God, on my birthday, I drove a car. I drove the car that I picked in the spirit realm. I got the car, people of God. You have to believe to receive. The reason why many of you here don't receive certain things because you don't believe. Your, the, the word might come, your name might be called, and you're still waiting because at the time when the angel came, you block him. But you're still going around asking everybody to give you that same breakthrough. When the angel came with it, you didn't receive it because you don't like the woman of God. Because the woman of God was stepping on your toes earlier. But now the woman of God came to bless you. So the God allowed the woman of God to call your name. But you didn't receive it. And this is why many people, they follow ministries and they don't get their breakthrough. Because their heart is not right. If you really want to be blessed, you got to bless the man of God. If you really want to be blessed, you got to bless the woman of God. I grabbed my keys. When it was prayer, when prayer was over, I pick up my keys from the pulpit, from the altar. And I said, Lord, I'm taking my new car this year. This year. And people of God, today I'm sitting in it. When you're ready for your blessing, you will begin to receive it. If you come to criticize, continue to criticize. But don't come to the broadcast and waste your time. If you need a new house, pick up your key. This is why I'm saying this now. Pick up your key. Somebody said, I want to move. 
because I want to be a landlord. Pick up your key. Somebody said I need that place of business that I'm trying to start my business, but I need an office space. Pick up your key because we're going to pray. We're going to pray. Pick up your key. Pick it up. Hallelujah. Pick it up, people of God. You already know what's in your heart. You already know what you desire. All you got to do, pick up that key. Hallelujah. So the Lord can do it in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, as I hold these keys in my hand, Lord, release upon your people, release over us today, O oh God. Let it be well with us for those that need to get out of get out of rent and start to be owner. We declare it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We are no longer renters. Anything we are going to rent, it's a place, it's an office space to run our business. But we will have our own homes. Somebody declare it today. Declare it today. Declare you'll get your own house. Declare it today. You will get your own car. Declare it because God will provide it. Declare it. You'll get that office space, that place of business. Declare it. You will be that landlord that you desire to be in the name of Jesus Christ. So now you're going to move from being a renter to a landlord. My God. Somebody go ahead and declare it. Somebody go ahead and declare it in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm Nazareth. I am now a landlord. I'm taking my portion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Take it. Some of us, they treat us bad. They raise the rent every year. And the Lord is saying, it's time to get your own spot. It's time to move in your own spot. It's time to declare your own keys. It's time to get the keys for the car. It's time to get the keys for the business. Yes, it might be an older car. Yes, you might desire to have something better, but you cannot afford it. Believe and God will release it upon your life right now. Believe and God will release it upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I know this is an old car. I know this is an old apartment. I've been stuck in it for 15 years. Lord, take me out of it and bless me with my own. He will do it. Open him out and pray, people of God. He will do it in your life. There is nothing too hard for God to do. There is no secret, my God, that God cannot give you. There's no secret. There's no secret that he can't do. What he has done for others, he will do it for you. I was at that church. Yes, I sow my seed, but I sow into the new key. And before the year was done, I sow into a new set of key. And before the year was done, hallelujah, God already, God blessed me. He blessed me by my birthday. This was during summer. And by October, by October, I drove out of the dealer on the 29th of October. My birthday was on the 30th. I drove out of the dealership with, listen to me, people of God. Let me tell you, when God is getting ready to bless you, it's only going to make your enemies angry at you. Tell somebody, tell my friends to get angry. Tell my enemies to get angry because of the life that I'm living. When you live the life to please God, he will open doors for you. People of God, when the man of God said, drop your key upon the pulpit, I'm like, what is this, a little trick? And then he said, for those of you who have a desire, he held up the basket. He held a basket. And in that basket, it's got Porsche, Mercedes, BMW, Range Rover. And he was mentioning names of cars that I've never heard of. I'm telling you the truth. But I claim one of the cars from the basket. And that was, yes, and I, I claimed it. I thought it was, I, I, I don't know, but I, you know, listen to me, that was spiritual. But I was obedient. And what I did, I thank God I was obedient. I sowed into it. And in October, for my birthday, God blessed me. God changed my story. I don't know what you desire. I don't know if you're living with family member. I don't know if you have outgrown your space. Some of us, we are living in some small spot and we need a bigger spot. I personally need a bigger spot. 
I need a prayer closet. I need a place to go to worship God. I need a place where I can, if I wake up in the middle of the night and I want to worship God, I have my prayer closet to enter into. Hallelujah. I need that space, people of God. So I encourage you right now, open your mouth and pray. You know what you need. You know what you desire. You know where you are. You know where you want to go. You know you already envision it. Many of you, God, already show you the house. Many of you, God already showed you your business place. He showed you a better spot, a bigger shop. My God, claim that key right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Many of you, you're tired of paying rent and you want to be a landlord because you see that there is a way to make money from being a landlord. Claim those keys in the name of Jesus Christ. Claim it. No demon in hell can stop you. Claim it, people of God. Claim it. Hallelujah. Claim it. Claim it right now in the name of Jesus. Claim it. There are some people paying rent, but yet they're out their landlord because they own properties. So yes, if you chose, you can pay rent while you are, you are a landlord. I don't know who I'm talking to, but the Lord gave me these words when I, right when I was driving, leaving, leaving the house. He said, write these prayer points down. Tell them, grab their keys. People of God, he wants to bless you. Grab your key. Grab your key. He's about to give you that key. That key. That particular key. Some of you, you want, to, you want, a, you want a, a vacation home in Florida. Some of you, you want a vacation home in the Cayman Islands. Some of you, you want a vacation home in Jamaica. Some of you, you want to have a... Yes. Yes, people of God. This is how God do it. This is how God operate. God wants to bless you. He wants to give you more. He wants you to come out of that little box that you have. He wants you to He want to give you that business. You are saying, I want a bigger spot, but I can't afford it. And God is saying there is a bigger spot down the street and it costs less than this little box that you are paying for. Hallelujah. Some of you, your rent is more than mortgage. Some of you here, you are paying so much money for rent and it can pay mortgage. People of God, it's time for you to start going, to, going in and talk to your bank and talk to them. And let them know I'm paying all this money for rent. I know I could do well with mortgage because I've been living in this house. I've been living in these people place for so long and every year they raise the rent and I know this money could pay mortgage. What do I need to be qualified? Oh God, I came to talk to somebody here. Talk to them at the bank. Ask them, what do I need to be qualified for a loan? And God will do it in your life. Many of you are paying so much money for rent. It's more than mortgage. Some of you, you can even mortgage the place that you live and get a second mortgage to buy another place to rent it out. Go in and sit down and talk to your bank. God gave me this today to share here on this live. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not done. My God. Lay, I don't know where you are right now. Some of you are at home. Some of you are at work. Some of you are at friend's house because of the pandemic. Some of you are even in hotels. It's true. Many people are in hotels. Or some people say hostels, right? So now, the next one is rest your hand on the wall. Wherever you are. Ju just lay your hand right there on the wall. I don't know, wherever it is. And claim your portion. Lord, anything that's here for me. Any blessing that's here in this place for me. I'm taking my portion. I'm taking my portion. I'm taking my portion. Any blessing in this place for you. Any blessing in this place for me. Hallelujah. I'm taking my portion. I'm going to say this people of God. There was a time when I was hungry. There was a time when there was no food. And I lived with my daughter. She was in college. I couldn't tell her. You know, you cannot tell your children what's really going on. You have to muscle up and act like the champion that they think you are. So I was hungry. I, I couldn't pay the rent. 
I couldn't pay the car note. The bank was calling. The bank keep calling me. And I found this spot. Right here where I am praying. And I come out of the car. I'm going to do it. I came out of the car. And when I came out of the car, I was crying. I began to talk to God. I don't know why you brought me up in this place. But help me, Jesus. I said, Lord, I don't know why you bring me up in this wilderness. But Lord, help me today. You know my koshabaka sataya. You know me, oh God, and you know my faithfulness. You know my faithfulness. I pay my tithes. I pay my offering. But Lord, don't let me die in this place, Lord God. You know my flaws. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me for my shortcomings, mighty God. Today, Lord God, I'm here. And I am looking for my breakthrough. I don't know anybody here in this place in Connecticut. I pray this prayer, people of God. I said, Lord, I don't have any friends. My mother is dead. Jesus. And I cry out to God. I said, Lord, I don't know why you bring me here. If you are God. If you are the God that you said you are, remember me today. If you are the God that you said you are, remember me today. Remember me today, Jesus Christ. Any blessing up in this mountain that belongs to me, mighty God, I take my portion today. Any blessing up in this mountain that belongs to me, mighty God, I'm taking my portion. People of God, I cry. I cry like somebody was beating me. I cry like somebody was whipping me because I couldn't take it anymore. I didn't want my daughter to know I can't pay the bills. She was in college. You know, come to think of it, it was, before my, it was right before my mother died. She never died yet. She wasn't doing well. And she kept complaining. And I couldn't do anything for her. And I begin to ask him, why? Why? What's going on? My sister died. Hallelujah. My sister died in 2006. And she was helping me to take care of my mother. And now I'm in this by myself. And now my mother is not doing well. So I cry. I came up here and I cry. And I asked God to help me. I asked God to help me. People of God, I don't know who I'm touching today. But this is my testimony. I came up right up here in these bushes. I came and I cried out to God. And I asked him to remember me. I asked him to remember the things that he told me to do. The places that he sent me to bless people. I said, Lord, remember. I remember him. I was like Ezekiah. I said, Lord, remember me. All the things that you use me to do for other people, Lord. Remember my faithfulness. All the people that you use me to call all over the world that I don't know. Lord, remember me. There is no food in my house. There is no water in my house. I cried to God. I cried out to God. And when I finished praying, he said, go home. And I went home and I went on the internet. And I began to apply for a job. And before the week was out, I got a job in New York. And when I got the job, it was a dirty job. The lady got four dogs. But I took the job. Because they took me into some mountains where the dog park was. So I usually go there to pray. And when I'm up there, I cry out to God. It was just a place like this, people of God. So when God wants you by yourself, it doesn't matter where you go. He will find a place of rest for you. He will find you a place of rest. And I went up into the mountains every day to pray. And I called my mother one day. And I said, it's the first time since I live in this country. I'm able to pay all my bills for the month. I said it to her. And she said, when are you coming to see me? I said, I'm going to come. And I bought my ticket because her sister died. And I went to, went to the funeral and she was there. 
And that was the last time I was going to see my mother alive. And I said to her, all these years I live in America. People think I have money. But I want to tell you this. This is the first time I was able to buy my ticket and buy stuff to bring for you and all these things. People of God, I cried. And I talked to her and I told her about this mountain. I said, I'm going to bring you to America so you could come and see the place where I go to pray. And she said, really? I said, yes. I did not know that was the last time I'm going to see my mother alive. And that was in February. And I came back. I went back to work. And when my mother, six months later, my mother died. I remember it just like it was yesterday. She was dying. She was dying when I came up here and prayed. But God provide me, provide for me. Because I got that job. I was able to give her a decent funeral. I don't know who the Lord is using me to talk to today. Maybe your mother is not rich. Maybe she was a mother like mine. She, 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 she never complained. But when she said, when are you coming to see me? Go, if she, go see her. Go and see her. I did not know that was the last time I was going to see the woman. But God provide. God provide. Because when she died and I went to bury her and I came back, I lost that job. I have not worked since. I don't know who I'm talking to today. I, I don't know who the Lord is using me to touch today. But God provided in a way. I came up here and I cried to him. And I received a job. And I was able to go and spend time with her. Because her sister died. Hallelujah. And then I was also able. To come back to work. I didn't know what was going to happen. Because I keep saying this is a dirty job. Why does God keep me here? People of God, don't curse where you're going. Things might not be where you want it to be, but don't curse the place that you are going. Hallelujah. Don't curse the place that you are going. Don't curse your season. People of God, I came to tell you today, don't curse your season. Don't speak against your season. I did not know that this was the end. But I had support. Family supported me. They were dear for me. They were dear for me. But God did it. And if God do it for me, if God did it in my life, He can do it in your life. You might not be living the life that you want, that you plan, that your parents plan. But God is saying today, just open your mouth and be thankful for your situation. Be thankful for your situation. Touch your head. People of God, just, just go ahead and touch your head. My God, any place. <laughs> We're going to pray, people of God, any place. Any place that he destined for me to be, I will go there. As I lay my hand on my head, I'm calling forth great destiny. As I lay my hand on my head, I'm calling. Listen to me, people of God. When I was leaving my house this morning, the Lord gave me some prayer points. And this is one of them. He said, tell them to touch their head and I will tell you what to say. So any place that he destined for you to go, as you lay your hand on your head, as you lay your hand on your head, doors are opening. Hekashaya Baba, Jesus. Any place that he destined for you to go, as you lay your hand on your head, Baba Kashataya, as you lay your hand upon your head, as you rest your hand upon your head, 
You heard me in your destiny, people of God. You heard me in your destiny. Hey, hey, hey. Boko, shodo boko, sadaba. Somebody open him out and pray. As you lay your hand upon your head, any place that he destined for you to be, you will be, you will go. Any place, ah, 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 any place. Any place that he has destined for you to be. Any place, it don't matter, any place. Some of us, we are here fighting somebody for a little job. Fighting them for a piece of loaf, a bread. Fighting for the last slice of bread on the lunch table. And God is saying, your daddy own a bakery. You're at that little job fighting, getting, fighting them for a slice of bread. And no, your daddy own a bakery. Any place that you have to be, Lord, take her there. My God, any place you got to be, Lord, take him there. Lord, any place your daughter have to be, take her there. Any place your son have to be, Lord, take him there. Many of us, we are fighting. We are struggling. For a slice of bread. Our daddy own a bakery. Hey. He make the bread. But you're at this little place fighting for a bread. Fighting for a slice. My God. The pollen is bad. My God. The pollen is so bad. We can't be fighting for something. We can't be fighting for one dime. When at the play, hey, Kashataya, when, when, when our daddy owned the distribution center, I was at this job and they fought me. I didn't say anything. I didn't kabakosho tokoraba kasataya. Any place that you got to be, any place that you got to be, hallelujah. I declare it right now in the realms of the spirit. I declare it right now in the realms of the spirit. I declare it right now in the realms of the spirit, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Any pabako shoto, roboko shababaka sataya. Jesus, somebody touch your mouth. Jesus, I think I'm going to come back later on. I don't know. Hallelujah. I, I love this place, people of God. This is where I find peace. This is where I find peace. Out here in the wilderness. And this is why the first time I brought my daughter up here, she said, Mommy, why you kept it a secret? I said, no, it's not a secret. It's just a place that I go to pray. Hallelujah. So I came to let you know. He that dwell in the secret place of the most high God. Abide under the shadow of the almighty. I'm here to talk to you. I'm here to talk to some people here today. I love your view pastor. Amen. God bless you. You see this is the thing that we have to do. We have to humble ourselves. We have to humble Bakoshato Korabaka Sataya. Somebody touch your mouth. Touch your lips. Hallelujah. Touch your lips. The Bible said the angel of the Lord. Touch his lips. Remember Daniel? Anybody remember Ezekiel? Anybody remember Jeremiah? Anybody remember Isaiah? He said, I am a man of unclean lips. I I pour the oil on my fingertip. Hallelujah. Jesus. I touch your lips right now with this oil. In the realms of the spirit. Hallelujah. You will speak. What God wants you to speak. Mm. As I touch your lip. As I touch your lip. You will speak. What God wants you to say. You will speak wisdom. 
You will speak understanding. You will speak the oracles of God in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will speak. You will speak. My God. You will speak in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will speak. Hallelujah. You will speak. My God. Jesus, you will speak. You will speak. People of God, my time is up. I'll be back at 12 so we could break our communion. Hallelujah. I'll be back at 12 so then we will have enough time to break the communion. But I encourage you people of God. Hold on to the faith. Live your life to please God. Today is day two of the journey. And I have to go according to the leading of the Holy Spirit. We are not doing this by ourselves. This is the word of God. I have to be obedient. I hear from him. So whatever he said, that's what I have to do. Hallelujah. So God bless each other. Sister Ivet, you don't know how much I just feel good to see you here. Hallelujah. God have some spiritual bodyguard. Some police, some CIA. I have quite a few of them here this morning. Hallelujah. I have some big Doberman and some Rottweiler <laughs> in the spirit. They are Rottweiler in the spirit. God bless you all. My God. I thank each and every one of you that showed up. My time is up. I'll be back at... In, I'll be back in two hours so we can um, break the communion. But as you see, the pollen is not treating me well, so I'm going to go home. All right, people of God. Yeah, the pollen from the trees, those blossoms, they call pollen, they're giving me a hard time because I'm breathing them in. Hallelujah. So God bless you, people of God. Remember, go to the YouTube channel and subscribe. Go to the YouTube channel. I want to come to you from YouTube. Go to the YouTube channel and subscribe. If the Lord touches your heart to bless the ministry, the number is right there. I know I teach today. I teach a lot. I broke down some things. And a lot of you, you see, this is how ministry goes. There, so, there was somebody here who needed to hear those words. And this is why the Lord used me the way he used me today. So let us continue to keep the fire burning. Let us continue. I'll be back in two hours to break communion. Hallelujah. Yes, I'll be back. So... Come back in two hours, people of God. And remember, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Whatever the Lord place on your heart for the ministry, just go ahead and do it. And don't, and don't hold on to your blessing. The longer you take to bless the ministries, the longer your blessing will take to come. Some people don't understand the things of God, so they have negative things in their heart. But I'm praying for God to convict some people because they don't know anything about God. God bless you and be blessed of the Lord. I cover every soul that's here. I cover you in the blood. In Jesus' name. As you share this broadcast, the Lord will remember you. People of God, we serve a covenant keeping God. And God don't forget his covenant. So I cover you right now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Share the broadcast. Support the ministry. It's yours. God give you. God gave you something. You got to take care of it. When He placed Adam in the Garden of Eden, He said, "Dress it and keep it." It's in the Book of Genesis. When He placed Adam in the Garden of Eden, He gave it to him. He said, "Dress it and keep it." Okay. God bless you. Stay blessed. Remember, go to YouTube, subscribe, and share. 
God bless. Sister Kavina, I miss you.